second guys so tonight I'm just sitting out at the forest close to us now there's a purpose behind me doing this and I perhaps should have had one of the Maasai warriors with me but I will next time I for the record I'm always armed when I'm out like this by the way I'm not armed with a gun um, but I'm armed with traditional means I always have a Maasai club with me and I always have a combat knife with me as well. A lot of people always get worried when they see me out at night and they ask about stuff coming. This area, uh, there's been no lions or anything like that here, the big ones. Uh, leopards we had, we have a few kilometers this way, but uh, I've never had anyone tell me that there's been a sighting here. I've never seen any tracks, I've never seen any evidence. There's never been any livestock taken here. So I don't worry about that. The only thing I worry about is snakes down here, to be honest with you, um, which is where the club and the knife comes in, because you all know over the years, if you've watched me from the beginning, how many snakes I've had a, a dance with, shall we say. <laughs> so, um, I'm out here, and the reason being, I have the permaculture starting. Now, the permaculture is going to be in this forest. Now, I need to identify what's going on with wildlife here and the area that we're going to work in is not far from here. Now, daytime's a different a different animal to nighttime. You know, people are walking the animals around, the kids are down getting firewood. You just see monkeys, the odd baboon, um, jackals I've seen in the daytime, uh, bush-tailed mongoose I've seen in the daytime. Um, birds of a plenty I've seen, of course, as well. But at night other things do come out and you do see them sometimes and even if it's like big pythons or if it's uh, more jackals than what I saw or hyena as well. I've had hyena come and pick a fight with uh, my dogs uh, at my fence one night. I couldn't believe my eyes. I heard the dogs fighting and ran out with the torch and they were fighting with hyenas through the fence which was unreal. And I want to see what's going on here. now. The reason I'm making this video, first of all, I'm here, uh, which is, I don't know if you'll see, hold on, right, so there's a clearing down there, and if any wildlife passes, it passes through there, so, I mean, obviously it's not going to pass while I'm chatting to you, but I know I'll be here a while, so, I'm sitting here doing this, but I have time. And the reason I want to make this is not only to tell you what I'm doing this for, why I'm sitting out in the dark on my own like a weirdo, but also I have time here on my hands and I was taught the other day some uh, pranayama by a Jain teacher here in Tanzania, a friend of mine, dear friend called Remy Shah. And they are... Remy and her husband met each other in yoga training in India where they spent 13 months doing daily yoga and meditation from 5 a.m. till 10 p.m. every day for 13 months without a day off. And instead of renouncing the world, they married each other and brought what they came, what they, what they found there back to the world. They took the path of the Bodhisattva, not the Buddha. Let's put it that way. Not that there's anything wrong with one or the other, but that's what happened. So they are very good teachers. Um, well, Remy has been a very good teacher. And because I'm having trouble with my autonomic nervous system, um, they started showing me about the Ayurvedic concepts of balancing your autonomic nervous system with alternate nostril breathing, a very simple thing. But it's so important for me to say that while I'm sitting here, I'm doing it. And I mean, I'm not doing it now, but it's just quite simply... That's it. It's a very straightforward, simple, alternating nostril breathing. Now, I've done this in yoga before. But the whole point of me doing this is not to show you pranayama, because once I'm doing uh, more stuff in depth, which is a Jain version, so I think it's interesting from a genuine Jain teacher, then... There's a set of eyes above me, and I don't know what it is. It's not a snake, by the way. 
a tie, I think it's a monkey. But he just... Oh wow, it's a genet. Not actually 100% sure what that was. I have to go over the video again and check. Looked like a genet cat or a civet, um, which looked like a tiny leopard. Very beautiful. Um, not a serval, by the way. It's a different one altogether. But uh, I love Tanzania, you know. I just heard it above my head and he was just looking at me from above me. Curious little thing. I'm not here to teach you pranayam, for all I will, because I'm learning it from directly from a Jain teacher. Uh, who's had a great deal of, uh, of a very peaceful energy, a light, enlightened being, I would dare say. Um, or at least someone on the path. But purely to say, make use of your time. I'm sitting here doing one job, but at the same time, there's nothing wrong with me working on my body while I do it. There's nothing wrong with me using my alternate nostril breathing while I do that. And this is one of the problems we face. For instance, if you have a long, I used to love when I had a long flight or a long train journey, once I learned to meditate, because I could spend the whole of that time focusing on my breathing, bringing myself deeper into the present moment. It was like someone was forcing me to sit on the meditation pillow. I had no choice. I was journeying, I was traveling. And yes, I'd pause and listen to music or have a snack, you know, like we all do. But at least I wouldn't sit and go, oh, I've got this long, boring journey and I need to make sure everything's charged for my journey because you can sit. And then the fact that you're simply on the journey is enough. And just as I'm sitting here now and I have a lot of, I'm sure I'll have an amazing few hours with everything that I'll find down here as I do. And, and, and the spirit brings me things as well quite often. Then I, I'm still going to be working on my body and my healing while I do it. You know, you don't have to sit in your house and do it. And you can make use of your time in the best possible way. So, that's all I wanted to say anyway. When you have free time, use it. But use it to develop yourself. Not to waste time. Not to distract yourself. Not to entertain yourself. But to create the best version of you. Whether you're improving on an already healthy self or restoring your health as I am at the moment. You can still focus on creating the best version of you with every spare moment you have. Love you guys. Oh, let me go see if I can find this guy. <laughs>